Yes. Yeah. Yes. Been one minute or two minutes or a couple. I am so happy. I'm so happy. Are you? Yeah. All right. I told you I'm flying today. I told you I'm flying high. And right. you said to me, you said, how high? And I said, so high that I can touch the sky. Is that a nursery rhyme? Uh, it might be. Mm. It, it also might be a hip hop lyric. I don't know. Oh. From one of your That's pals. That's something Drake would say. From one of your pals. Yeah. So high that I can touch the sky. Mmm. How's this song? Song is fantastic. I feel like, uh, you know what it is? It's the leaf. You're zoomed in. And it's the leaf which is falling. Okay. Slowly. But you have no idea when it started falling, and you certainly have no idea uh, when it'll stop. It's very fall. It's just, it's floating like this <laughs> side and then that side. Do you know the kind of shape that it makes as it falls? And yeah. catches some of the breeze? It's called leafing. I don't believe you. It is. Leafing is what? Is like watching the leaves fall? That's a snowboarding ter uh, term. You can like leaf. That's so you feel like just because it got cold outside, now it's, this is snowboarding talk. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, now this is the snowboarding It's show. snowing, actually. So. so it's a snowboarding show then. Uh, yeah. Right. Let's talk about, right. you know, freestyle. <laughs> yeah, I know you're big into it, and we talked about it because I was over there. I was down there near the mountains. I was, I was on. I was, yeah. I was elevated. You were there. I was elevated down there in uh, upstate New York. I was close to the Vermont border. I'll tell you what. Uh huh. And I'm looking at these mountains, and I, you know what I'm thinking? You know what comes to mind? I look at these mountains. What's that? You, you come to mind. I say, Me? oh, yeah. I say, I can oh, okay. picture. I'm leafing. I can picture Willie do leafing down. The, the the face of these mountains but the, the sure. problem is i didn't see any powder for you <laughs> saw none of that just scraping my face but i was looking at the ski jumps over there and you know they train on those things year round without snow yeah they have like fake grass sure. and they just fly off of there and yeah. it's year round and they might you know a team might come in there and spend a month just jumping i would like to try that you don't want to try actually that. no i don't you kidding? At your advanced uh, age? Yeah. You gotta take. You gotta pay attention. I gotta take it easy. Yeah, you gotta pay attention to what you already know and love I at this point. I should do anti-snowboarding then. So, are you getting out there this year? Then is that what's gonna happen? Uh, I'll try. Are the people gonna see you out there on the mountain? Yeah. They are. Yeah. You probably have all the paraphernalia as well. Oh. You're Jesus. gonna have an outfit going on. Okay. I bet you I, it's going to be like you're going to have a very specific coat and a boot and uh, a glove. Uh, yeah. One glove? No, I I mean, you know, yeah. I, uh, ahead, yeah. Yeah. I'll wear something. I told I'm you. I'll wear nothing, okay? I told you. Do, you. do you do you shy uh, away from the vibrant colors? Yeah. You shy away. I'm pretty... Because it seems to be the one time it's ex uh, accepted is on the ski hill. It's all of a sudden, it's like, whoa! Yeah. Anybody can... You're allowed to do anything on the ski hill. It's mm -hmm. all of a sudden the neons and these come out. Yeah. And and elsewhere in life, that same person, they play it safe. But they get out to the ski hill and they say, maybe bathing suit is the other one. Mm. All of a sudden, the guy's got some kind of wacky pattern on the bathing suit. You're like, you wear a suit every day, sir. <laughs> yeah. They don't judge in uh, on the beach or the mountains. The beach and the mountain. Yeah. It's different rules. Mm. Different rules. I uh, thought you were going to fly today. What? what I'm happened? flying right now. I'm okay. flying high, so high People I can... People need to hear the news. Can ...touch the sky. Images of an unreleased Apple Magic Charger surface online. Uh, a charging accessory called the Apple Magic Charger. What's so magic about it? Surfacing over the past couple of weeks, rare Apple product collector and Twitter user, the Blue Mister. Oh, how how uh, mysterious. Mm. Uh, the Blue Mister. First shared images of the unreleased accessory earlier this month. Since then, other collectors based in Asia seem to have got their hands on the design validation test versions of the device and are sharing images of it online. Hmm. Well, 
it looks almost exactly like the current MagSafe charger, which just has a cable coming out of it. Instead, in this case, there's like a machined base that it seems to fit inside of. Now, you will often see Apple Watch chargers that are able to uh, create this angle mm. so you can kind of have it facing uh, towards you instead of up to the ceiling. Right. Uh, so I could imagine a product like this existing. It's also kind of... It feels like there's a bit of a gap there. The only charger they currently have for MagSafe official charger is the little puck, which that thing can still fall behind the table, and it's not really a dock per se. Mm. Are you gonna? Say, were you thinking, hey, maybe they have something else that I'm forgetting right now? Obviously, there's a lot of third party options from the likes of Anchor and Belkin and so forth. Mm. The Blue Mister has said about disassembling the accessory to restore it to working order, showing some of the process on Twitter. Connection to a Mac reveals the unreleased accessory is called the Apple Magic Charger. Wow, looks like the cable is cut there. Yeah. Now, is this just a prototype that would never actually materialize into a product you can buy? Maybe. But it does feel to me that, or you know, maybe, Will, they were thinking, hey, are we doing puck or are we doing dock? Mm. What are we doing? Because this is not all that much less portable. In fact, maybe you could have a some sort of dual setup where that could be modular and the puck could come out if you wanted to use the phone with the puck sure. attached or it could lock in for when you want to have a certain angle for viewing and so on. But it does look relatively portable still. Of course, anytime there's an Apple prototype or a uh, rumor around a new product, a new SKU, it doesn't seem to matter. Uh, it's going to get some attention regardless. Mm-hmm. That's and just it, the way it, it is. It does look like an Apple product. It looks very um, pristine. So you don't question sharp. the legitimacy of it? I do. You do? Yeah. 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 But it looks like something Apple would do. Well, you know, Apple has a track record with these chargers of going partway down the road and then cutting their losses and heading back home. Manito. That's right. Yeah. So, well, listen. I, maybe we'll never see it. Maybe we'll see something like it. The Magic Charger. A mysterious find. Yeah. It does have the braided cable with it in this picture, yeah. which seems to be hacked off in the in the other one for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. Apple rolls out iPhone emergency SOS satellite alert service for when you're off the grid. Here's how it works. So that's the thing they were chatting about, all the ways you were going to die in the last keynote. Yeah, with the helicopter. And you're in the desert. Skies. You're in the Arctic. You're just dot. You're just this constant threat. You're Tom Cruise. It's Mission Impossible. Yeah. It's Maverick. It's uh, what other movies was he was he risking it all? I don't know. Um, what other risky roles were in there? Edge of Tomorrow. I Remember think he actually. Movie? I think he actually had a movie called Risky Business. Now that I just keep saying oh, okay. risky, but I don't think he was actually threatened. Uh, in that movie, uh, what, what, uh, a few good men. You remember that? Yeah. You can't handle yeah, the truth. Yeah. I feel like he was in that. He was. He I feel was like Tommy Cruise was over there. Uh-huh. Did I ever tell you I went to see that Maverick and then he was looking at me in the movie theater? Tom, he's looking right at me, making eye contact. He's saying, just want to let you know, I appreciate you coming to see this movie. <laughs> um, yeah, you told me about it. Did you have the same experience? Because you were Mr. Maverick, weren't you? I didn't watch it. Oh, okay. That was somebody else. Somebody was... It was Vin. Oh, it was Vin. Yeah, he watched it twice Holy in the God, that guy was he, was... he was like, you got to come see Tommy Cruise. And I was like, well, I don't get out to the movies. He's like, you got to come. You're bringing the kids. We're going. He forced your hand. He he basically... There was no... I, I couldn't get out of it. He, he cared to that extent. Apple rolled out emergency SOS via satellite for iPhone 14 users on Tuesday. The service is free for two years with the newest iPhone model and allows you to text emergency services when you don't have cell service. Pretty cool. You go to the satellite. Apple will spend $450 million with U.S. companies, including Global Star, to enable the emergency satellite texting feature. Two years free is pretty good. I don't know what that's going to cost eventually mm. and whether or not people will go for it once they have to pay for it, but they're going to let you try it out on your own. Now, the weird thing is you might not even try it out because... I mean, how often are you needing the emergency SOS? You might have this phone for two years, never even use it, and then two years from now, they're like, hey, you want to keep that? And you're like, I don't know. I never even used it. Yeah, can you postpone it? 
That's why I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think so. I think it's an all or nothing type situation. Uh, Apple announced the emergency feature in September when it debuted the iPhone 14 lineup to enable the service. Apple said last week it would spend $450 million. Uh, Louisiana-based satellite operator. It's going to work for all four iPhone 14 users. Uh, d- do so by pointing their phone to the sky and connecting to one of 24 global star satellites in low Earth orbit. Apple doesn't want users testing the service out for non-emergencies. Company offered a demonstration last week. Yeah, I mean, it's still going to be real, legit emergencies. And it's only going to be in the event that regular emergency services, 911, is not working. Then you're going to tap into that uh, next level mm-hmm. of satellite SOS. It's a cool thing to have. I am not frequently in situations where I would take advantage of it. But it's kind of nice to know. I mean, you could, I, well, the way you're out there with the snowboarding that we sure. just talked, you could be up on a mountain, no cell city. I don't know. Mm-hmm. If you go in the back country. Oh, I like that. If you go out with there. The pow. I, I don't know. Maybe you maybe you find yourself down in uh, Utah or maybe you find yourself down in. Uh, uh, Jackson Hole. Yeah, where is that? That's in not in Utah. That's in uh, Wyoming. Yeah. Yeah, you might find yourself in Wyoming. Yeah. I'll give it a shot. Go visit. If I'm there. Go visit Kanye over there. Sure. He bought, what did he buy? 4,000 acres or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. So you chill with him and then uh, Jackson Hole and then uh, uh, emergency SOS with Apple. Mm hmm. You're all set to basically do whatever you want. And the helicopter's going to come get you. You know who could have used it? The guy. Remember the guy? Which one? In the crevasse. He might have been in the Swiss Alps or something. Yes. He goes down a crevasse, and his pal sees it happen, So, and he broke his leg down there. I just remember watching this clip. Uh-huh. I feel like we watched it together. Broke his leg? Probably on this show. We probably watched it together. I think he broke his arm. Whatever it was. He got stuck. Listen. <laughs> Oh wait, this is a different story you're going with yeah. now. You're 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 putting these stories together. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, there is an alpine component to this where the SOS could really give you a sense of security sure. if you're really the type to go out there mm-hmm. with the alpine lifestyle or the rock climbing. You know what? Actually, you're into a few dangerous activities now that I think about it, which is actually kind of uncharacteristic for you, huh? Well, you, we just labeled, you got the snowboarding in the backcountry that you do in, in uh, Jackson Hole. And then you got the rock climbing you're doing over there at uh, where you, Yosemite or something. Yeah. And so. Oh, Cappy 10. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm actually concerned as I put it all together here. I'm like, you need this feature, Will. Yeah, I'm an adrenaline junkie. Yeah. You're the <laughs> guy that needs this. You're just trying to feel alive. Sure. Yeah. Anyway. Today we're sponsored by ZocDoc, top-rated primary care doctors and specialists. You can find them all in one place on the internet, which is where you find everything. And doctors and specialists, it should be the same thing. Primary care dentists and so forth, dermatologists. You need one of these people, but you're sitting there saying to yourself, what am I What am I doing? Am I trying to get a recommendation from a friend? What is this, 1927? No, you go on the internet, don't you, Will? Mm. And what do you do when you actually want to make an appointment? Well, with ZocDoc, you do that online as well. You see the scheduling right there. You see the hours right there. You're able to get yourself booked in. You're also able to find out if your insurance is applicable so that you get no surprises when you head over there. You can see the uh, 98% of patients have successfully booked with these insurances. So you feel confident in the fact you have the location. Everything is beautifully in one place. My favorite part, the reviews are on there. You can see what other users are saying about a particular doctor specialist. So you feel comfortable going into it, uh, that it's an individual that's uh, well respected in their field. So if you've been putting off uh, uh, booking these appointments or for whatever reason, which you shouldn't do, uh, you go to ZocDoc and you feel comfortable uh, going into it and bringing the doctor thing into the internet era. Thank you to ZocDoc. ZocDoc is a free app that shows you doctors who are patient reviewed. Take your insurance and are available when you need them. Find and review local doctors. Read verified patient reviews from real people who made real appointments. When you walk into the doctor's office, you're all set to see someone in your network who gets you. Go to ZocDoc.com slash later and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C. 
doc.com slash Lou later. ZocDoc.com slash Lou later. Steve Jobs, he got uh, his uh, old Birkenstocks are are uh, sold for uh, 218750 Those are some worked in Birkenstocks. You can smell them. It's like the 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 cork, the footbed. It has it's beginning to collapse over there, and the 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 foot has been has basically like etched itself in there. Yeah, I don't that know how close. you I don't know how you authenticate something like this. Look at the straps. I mean, it's so worn down. Now you knew he loved the Birkenstock. I don't mind the wearing the Birkenstock. I think I actually might have the same color. Okay, it's well, it's very similar to something I have, which is tobacco color um however i don't know what this looked like originally his looks more like the suede kind of on the exterior mm. as opposed to the oiled leather which is kind of what they're doing a lot of now but anyway he was famous for for wearing these all the time yeah so these went on sale uh i guess it was an auction you're gonna get the you get the uh, birkenstocks and an nft of them because it's 2022 <laughs> of course yeah the shoes, which were expected to sell for eighty thousand, blew away all expectations. Brown suede sandals in question, made by Birkenstock. There are many photos of Jobs in Birkenstock, similar to these from the seventies and eighties. But the full provenance of the main item in the auction is hazy. Oh, that's what I was saying. I'm like, man, it's a pair of Birkenstock. How do I they authenticate? Who gave it to you? According to Julian's Auctions, Jobs gave the sandals to his house manager, Mark Sheff, but Julian's Auctions didn't confirm that it was Sheff who listed this particular lot. The sandals were part of his simple side. They were his uniform. Jobs' daughter, Chrisanne Brennan, said in an interview in 2018 about Birkenstocks that Jobs wore, the great thing about a uniform is that you don't have to worry about what to wear in the morning. Mm. Huh. Well, it seems a little bit risky, but uh, somebody in the top comment there says... Probably has some of Jobs' DNA on it. Whoa. So maybe the, you would think there'd be a way to authenticate it. I'm just saying, if you wore it that much and sure. it's worked in like that, uh, and whoever paid 218000 I hope, knows of a way to authenticate such things. Do you think they're going to wear it? No, you're not wearing that. That's like You put that in a glass case or something, I oh, guess. Okay. I guess, Will. You know, collectibles. Yeah. Uh, NFTs. Well, congrats. Congrats to the anonymous bidder that uh, won this. Oh, by the way, the it is a brown suede leather Birkenstock, Arizona. That's what they're labeling as the uh, model. And listen, this guy could have had a new pair every day, but one thing about Birkenstocks is they get better as you wear them. They begin to really break into your own unique shape. It is funny seeing such a beat up sandal in a like a Pelican style case for shipping. Yeah. Like, no, we're going to protect this. It's like, who would even know? They're so beat up at this point. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Tesla denies. Oh my God, I saw this story. You you got so angry when I brought this story up. You just you just weren't having it. Not even for a split second. You were not having it. Now that you're a Tesla owner, you're so hey 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 now. Hey. You're so angry now that you're a Tesla Hello, owner. Sorry. You're an and investor or whatever it is that you have going on. Uh, because this story came up and you were like scam bogus conspiracy impossible teslas are the best they would never do this to someone and i was like wow you seem pretty certain how much stock did you buy you know elon's selling it you're buying it yeah goes directly to me tesla denies a brake system failure after a runaway model y kills two people in china i saw the clip very uncomfortable clip but i had questions similar to you where i was like well, how are all these clips so perfectly edited together? Who had access to all this footage? What news organization was able to collect all those clips? Big brother. And merge it together and so forth. And, you know, everybody's reading between the lines here. And it was a curious clip. It also looks like kind of a modified Model Y. He got the top wrapped. He changed the wheels on it. Everybody likes to personalize the Model Y, the Model 3. Uh-huh. Those models are so personalized. I saw one on the way over with some sort of like fluorescent pink color shifting wrap on it. And I was just like, man, is that Will in there? <laughs> I was like, is that Will in there? That's me. Because because I know you've been chatting and I'm nervous for what you might do next now that you're one of these uh, owners, one of these yeah. types over here. Mm -hmm. This Model Y is a very strange uh clip 
Can I actually play the video? I don't know if you can play the video. It's actually kind of uncomfortable to watch, I'm gonna be honest. But yeah. but the, the Model Y appears to be like braking and attempting to pull over, but it just doesn't brake. You see the brake lights are on, but it's still rolling. And it just kind of goes back out into the roadway and then picks up tremendous speed. And you're just watching along as these this variety of uh, security cameras and the exterior of buildings are capturing this entire uh, uh, trip. And it's just cutting from one to the next. Now, that clip in particular, you really get a sense for how fast the thing is going. Like a rocket. The owner apparently said, again, this is where Will gets very upset with me. But the report apparently, I mean, this is just me on Reddit and I'm like reading around. Of course, nobody's going to know. Uh, Tesla looks into it. That person got clipped. Um, that they were trying to hit the brakes. The brakes wouldn't work and the car just kept accelerating. Basically is the story. And then some people say, well, maybe you thought you were hitting the brake, but you're actually hitting the accelerator. And, you, you know, but then other people said, well, this was actually a, like an Uber driver, uh, China equivalent of an Uber driver who drives a lot and it's their own vehicle. It's unlikely that they, that man, that just obliterated that. And that lady in the bike? Oh man, it's, it's, right it, it's ugly stuff, man. Oh, yeah, it's, it's actually, brutal. it's actually, these cars are so quick and they accelerate so instantly and they're so quiet and, but this could happen with any vehicle, to be honest. You know, right? Anybody could uh, uh, have a mishap with any vehicle. Vehicles are, 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 are dangerous things. And you look at these streets with the people just kind of on the, right on the edge of these streets and they're tight and, 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 and you're just nervous from the minute you see the first clip. Mm -hmm. But apparently Tesla looked into it and I think their reply was, no, the brake wasn't pressed. Apparently, I mean, you can see the brake light go on. Uh, the electric car maker, uh, which is the flagship company, yeah, Elon Musk, said in a statement that the brakes on the Model Y did not fail. Data recovered from the car showed no evidence that the brake pedal had been applied prior to the accident. Tesla stated, as reported by Bloomberg, the company also said that the footage showed the brake lights had not been on at any time during the lead up to the incident and that the accelerator had been applied with force. Tesla also said in a statement that the company will actively provide any necessary aid. This is actually a very familiar story because we've seen we saw that tesla go right into the mall you will often you'll see this clip and as it is with tesla you get these stories that blow up it is possible that it's human error it's also possible that it's not that's i mean what can we really say well mm. it's it, either, either you can have things malfunction you can have people malfunction like that's the bottom line and mm. we're out here looking at a security camera we don't have whatever evidence they're looking at. Right. The crazy part is you have two people dead, three people injured. The driver themselves, I think, had a broken rib but survived. Mm. Which, man, what a just a very freaky experience. 55-year-old driver tested negative in a breathalyzer and drug test. The same source has cited members of the driver's family who said he had been complaining for some time about issues with the car's braking system. I don't know, man. Cars and technology can malfunction. Yeah. Humans can malfunction. Yeah. Or, I mean, if you really want, you can look at the big picture, right? You can look at the statistics. You can look at how many vehicles are out there, how many of them are not doing this, and then attempt to deduce uh, from that some, you know, but each one is unique and requires an investigation. It's just unfortunate this outcome here. Uh, it's a crazy clip to watch. This clip was flying on Twitter, man. Yeah. It's just uh, very unfortunate. Like Tough. stuff like this happens. Tough. But when it comes to, you know, technology and cars now, isn't there going to be like a incident where regulation would have like a black box, kind of like an airplane? Where it would kind of log everything. Yeah, well, that's what that's exactly what like Tesla's that. looking into. They say the brake pedal wasn't applied. We recovered the data. But that's the thing. Oh, you Who don't knows? want Tesla to look at it. You want no. Maybe Tesla has the data, but kind of manipulated it. I don't know. So you think that the, the data should be recovered by the authorities and and like as an intermediary? But then maybe hmm, I don't know. do they know how to interpret it properly? And there's all kinds of questions that arise. Yeah. Um, but either way. Uh, Tough situation. You guys let me know in the comments or, you know, do you, do you, 
you watch the clip and you tell me user error or technology failure. You go ahead. You tell me. You tell me. Okay. Tesla confirms its supercharger is way more powerful than previously thought. That's good. I, I want that. Mm. With the opening of its proprietary charge connector, Tesla's confirmed the supercharger is way more powerful than we, we had thought. It points to up to 900 kilowatt of potential total output. Surprised many by announcing it's opening its EV charge connector in the hope of making it the new standard in North America. They should have done this sooner mm. because everybody's got this other connector now. Like the rest of the industry, we're still digging into all the documentation that Tesla's released for the proprietary charge connector to convince people to adopt it. In the documentation, Tesla describes two versions of its charging technology capable of operating at 500 volts and 1,000 volts, but they are interoperable. Two interfaces are shown below, the 500 volt and the 1,000 volt. Two interfaces are mechanically interoperable, fit into the same slot. Uh, and then I suppose can just, which is kind of nice because if you look at the high voltage stuff on other vehicles, you often have a secondary flap mm. and then a, an actual bigger connector in order to achieve those higher voltages. Oh, okay. The capacity to operate a thousand volts is new information that wasn't known about Tesla's charging capacity before, other than for the upcoming megawatt charging for the Tesla semi truck. Furthermore, Tesla noted in the documents that it has been able to operate at over 900 amps. Well, this is obviously fantastic news for people who are looking to charge quickly, rapidly. Uh, you yourself have gotten a little taste of the charging lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, have you pushed it? Is there range anxiety? What's the furthest you've gone with your new electric vehicle? Um, I drove it around like on the west side and back, and it's. Uh, I went down to like twenty percent. You got as low as twenty. Days. You got as low as twenty. That's not um, panic zone. No, it didn't really long. worry me that much. No. I'm going to push it. Have you hit a supercharger yet or have you just been local? Local. Just just the, at work? Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, well, that goes to show you. A lot of people think they're going to have this range anxiety and then it's like, I don't really go that many places. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I, I'm curious when you actually hit the road trip and then I want the, uh, I want the report back on the supercharger experience, okay? Sure, I'm going to test it out. All right, beautiful. You know what, Will? I got to get out of here. It's, okay. uh, I didn't go rapidly enough, and so we have a, a few stories left over. We'll have to push into the next show. Thank you to everybody uh, who joined us here today. And uh, listen, there's always stuff happening in the world. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. We got a lot to say. A lot like to how do. I got my Tesla. Yeah, well, that's a little... Did you have to do the cliffhanger over here? Because I get to the show here today and he goes, don't talk about my Tesla today. Well, you did. Obviously, I, did. obviously I proceeded to do, but I know you you basically didn't want me to ask certain questions. But there's it's developing. It was like you were telling me to sign like a verbal NDA and I was feeling the pressure from that. And I was like, okay, I'm going to just... Well, you hinted it. Talk about it loosely, but anyway, yeah. uh, Will has some whatever, some big news or some big finding. So there's your cliffhanger for you. Okay. You're gonna have to keep it locked. We'll be back soon with another episode. I apologize for uh, the short one here, but uh, sometimes life will smack you square in the face. Yeah. And you you want to know something? You go down. Guess what? You get back up. Okay. Later, everybody.